Do you hear that? No heater running. How about that? No hissing in the background. Well, I'm going to look at this thing. Needs a little bit of work that Matthew Morris sent me. Uh, the adjuster on it doesn't work the greatest. It's got some rust on it from from being in the mail for so long. Coming from California to Canada, a little bit of humidity change too. But this adjuster only gets up to about here, and then it starts to bind a little bit right there. And of course, my tap and die set, I don't have the right die for it. This is a 24 thread per inch, I believe. Come on, focus. Oh yeah, 24 thread per inch, and I have only have an 18. So I'm gonna have to do this a little bit manually. So over to the workbench we go, and I've got my metal working vise, and I've got that put into a, a block of wood. So my woodworking vise will become a metal working vise. And of course, it swivels into whatever position I need. So, I've got a set of inexpensive needle files. I'm going to see if we can fix that up a little bit and get some rust off of it and get it working nice. And I'll be right back. What I've got is right about here. I don't think you can see it too much. i got lots of zoom on there. Looks like somebody grabbed it with a pair of pliers or vice grips. So I've got myself a a needle file. It's kind of tapered on both sides. And I got my magnifiers on. And this doesn't exactly come under a lot of stress, so I'm figuring I can straighten these files out, these threads out with the file, just by cleaning them up just a little bit and get the main guck out of there. And just sacrifice maybe a little bit of thread. The majority of it will hang on there. And the reason is that this adjuster has to come right out in order to flip over to handle the, handle the uh, Veritas blades if I want to get another Veritas blades. I'm just going to gingerly work at these threads a little bit and get it to the point where it works better. A little bit of 3-in-1 oil always helps. Uh, we're kind of getting there. We're close already. I'm just going to move some of the, the deformed metal out of the way here. And we'll just slowly work it. Oh, look it. A little bit farther now. Not going to take too long at all if it keeps going like this. And these threads don't have to. It's not like they're securing anything down with any great force or anything, it's just an adjuster, so I'm not worried about too much about losing a bit of strength on the threads. work this along a little bit at a time until we can get this off nicely. And 
I got it clamped on the vise pretty gingerly, so it's moving around a touch. So I'm hoping it's staying in frame. be a bit of a bend in it too so could be possible I'll cut a quarter inch or something right off of this So I'm going to have to flip this over a little bit and around and that's going to move you out of frame. So we're just going to carry on like we are for a little bit and see what we can do here. We'll be back in a bit. So success. Not even five minutes worth of work. And I've got that working fairly nice now. So now my adjuster works. Now the blade on them comes through the collar and it fits on there. And there's a little bit of corrosion on there so I'm going to just clean that up just a bit so it, it slides around there a little bit nicer. And I think I'll use the Dremel tool for that with a wire brush on it. Oh, here we go. Dremel tool and a little bit of a, I think it's a nylon brush, not wire. Get that cleaned up a little bit. So we've got to get slightly more aggressive here. It's still binding up a bit. So my favorite rust removal method, 400 grit. Actually, this one's pretty worn. And a bit of WD-40. And it's on a, a piece of granite tile to give me a nice flat surface. coming pretty good already. Get a rag here. Hmm, I don't see if you can, don't know if you can see that or not. I'll give it a bit more. See if you can see this or not. Can we get this thing to focus? There we go. New Britain. Stanley New Britain. And I think that's Connecticut. 
T-O-N-N. So it's coming along slowly but surely. One step at a time. the blade needs a little bit of work. We'll do a little bit of filing on that too. Find a, a flat one. And just take down any little edges and snags there. Get it working nice and smooth. And these needle files are just cheap ones. I think I got these ones at Princess Auto. But, you know, you can pick them up at any hardware store or anything, usually about, yeah, $10-ish. Canadian pesos, so probably $7 and $8 in American money. And we'll just work that down just a bit. And, of course, we've got the other side, too, just to get any little burrs and snags off of it. We don't want to be too aggressive with it. We can always do more later. But if we take too much off, then we're not in a good spot. So it's kind of like cleaning, you know, you start off with plain water first. And if that doesn't work, you go something very mild and get more aggressive as you you see what's happening. You always take the less, least aggressive method first and work up from there. jammy there. Well, it seems to be working where it counts now. Maybe a touch more at the back there. trying to make this thing a showpiece or anything. I'm making it a functioning, usable tool. There's no way that this is going to sit on a shelf and just be pretty. It was meant for a reason. The Stanley Company made it for a reason. That's what it's going to get used for. Okay, I don't have the, the lock ring on there yet. But just do an experiment here to a little tight spot. It should loosen up after a while. going now. It's moving. Not like it yet, but
and just heard a just heard a flock of thunder swans go over. They're usually here for a few days in the spring on their migration path, so it's nice to see them coming by. Another sign of spring. I've seen a robin today. I was out yesterday listening to the red winged blackbirds. Well, being a rotor plane, it's not vital for this to be perfectly flat and beautiful, but you know, we'll clean it up a little bit, anyways. Alright, I guess we're ready for some sharpening. Eh, do I want to clean that up at all? I don't think so. We'll just pop that right on there. That's the collar for holding it in place. So I guess we'll uh, get this blade to sharpen and see what happens. Okay, time to tune up the blade a little bit. Again, using my fancy glasses. This is pretty sharp. We're just going to clean it up a little bit. Give it a little bit of a home. This thing, you might have seen it, used to have a little piece going on for my vise. And I've modified it, I cut it off shorter and I put a couple of wee little tiny nails to come through it so it grips on there. And we're just gonna Just clean it up a little bit freehand. It already is quite sharp. And I said just from being in the, the post for so long, coming from California to Canada. A little bit of a temperature and humidity difference there. We're just going to clean it up a little bit. Um, this is a thousand grit. I don't know what the angle is, but if it was good enough for Matthew, it's good enough for me. He's head and shoulders above any work that I've done. This is the tricky part. Oh, there's a micro bevel on it.
It's getting there. Almost. over to the 4,000 grit side. Do the back first. Ooh. Mm. Gouging my stone is no good.
I've never sharpened one of these before, but the theory is all the same. Two planes meeting at a a perfect angle. What did they say? An angle without a radius. Perfect. It'll get there over time. A few more sharpenings. Well, it catches my fingernail. I don't think it's sharp enough to shave with, but... I don't think it has to be either. Let's work on that end just a little bit more. I think that'll do for now. Good enough for experimenting with anyways. I'll definitely be sharpening it a few more times before I put it to use on a project. Okay, we'll go back over to the other bench. This is just furniture paste wax. This one's tree wax, same as Johnson's or what have you. A carnauba wax, and what I've done with this is, uh, this is almost empty. So I heated it up until it was liquid and added some 3-in-1 oil to it. And that is rust preventative. Make everything work all nice. I'll just give everything a wipe down with that. So carnauba wax is, I think it's pretty much the hardest wax, hardest natural wax that there is. So it's good for furniture and that. But in this instance, as I'm using it for a rust preventative, I've thinned it out. And with the three in one oil. Seeing as I've got no kind of heat or air conditioning or anything in here. Just try to keep my stuff from rusting a bit. Give everything a wipe 
down with it. And for the threads, conductive anti-corrosion surface compound. Which is an anti-seize compound. So we'll just put a touch of that on there. Just a little bit. This is an actually an industrial product that I scrounged. nicer. I've had that bottle for oh well over 20 years. I guess I should have put that collar on first. Sandy Seas is basically, I think it's copper and graphite and some sort of grease. Get my rag so I can get a grip on that until it gets past that sticky spot. Oh, I'm going to put the blade through the collar. Thanks, honey. Snacks from my wife. Still a little jammy in there. There we go. And there's one little sticky spot in there. spot that we have to work on. About that far. Okay, I think we're just about ready for a test run. See how this thing works. And get that set up and I'll be right back. So what are we going to do with this thing? Okay, I've taken about a quarter inch and struck a line. And I've adjusted my blade to that. 
And we'll get a square. And a marking knife. And this is just for experiment. So this is going to be quick. And a chisel. Am I still in shot there? that out. And take a saw. to the line. Put it on there. Use that to measure with. And we'll come over here. And define our knife wall. And we'll take our saw again. Oh, and I'm bleeding, of course. This side. Most of our waste away. Small chisel here to get rid of most of our waste. And then we take our router plane.
and that gives us a nice flat bottom. Oh, I'm tight. I really see why my saw didn't cooperate. Now we get a nice flat bottom. Rub that out on it. And that's what a router plane is used for. It gives you a nice flat bottom. So there we go. Blood and everything on it. But a quick spruce up. Gosh, that's tight. Maybe I can use it for something someday as a reminder to be careful with sharp things. So that's it. The router plane from Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio. That's going to come in awfully handy. I think we need a special spot for it. We'll get right on that. Of course it's got bolts on it so you can, or bolt holes in it, so you can put a wire base on it. And there we go, a place of honor. The Stanley 71 router plane. Thank you very much once again Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio.